Hi, I'm Mrs. McGregor. I'm the reading specialist from Prairie View. Sit back, maybe hold your reading buddy, and listen to me read Chapter 21, Scene Stealer. At last, Janie's opening night had arrived. Bat felt that it arrived at last because it seemed like he'd been hearing Janie talk about it forever. In just a few hours, he wouldn't have to hear about how excited Janie was and how nervous Janie was anymore. We're leaving five minutes, Bat, Mom called from the kitchen. She'd already dropped Janie off at the school so that she could get ready. I get to wear a hoop skirt and makeup and fake eyelashes, Janie had boasted before she'd left for the show. That all sounded perfectly terrible to Bat. Clothes should be easy to wear and comfortable, like t-shirts and pants with elastic waists. And the thought of anyone gluing anything to their eyelids made Bat positively twitchy. Bat looked around the room. He didn't want to go to Janie's play. In the last few years, few weeks, he'd spent so much more time away from home that he was used to, than he was used to, that another night out sounded just awful. And there was little Thor in his playpen, finished with his dinner and looking up at Bat expectantly. Every night after dinner, Bat had been taking Thor out and working on training him to come and to stay. They were still working on stay though. Oh, little Thor, Bat said to the kit, you look lonely in there. Bat felt lonely too, even though he was about to go to a theater filled with people. Sometimes that was when Bat felt the loneliest of all in a crowd. Without really thinking about it, Bat slung the Thor's sling over his neck and scooped up the kit, nestling him in place. This time, it was a really tight fit for Thor to fit in the sling. Bat would have to ask Lawrence to make him a bigger one. He grabbed his jacket and put it on over the sling and zipping it up all the way to the top. Just settle down and take a nap. See the picture? Bat whispered, and you can come with me to the show. When Bat came to the kitchen, Mom said, are you sure you want to wear your jacket? It's a lovely night. Oh, oh, I am sure I want to wear my jacket, Bat answered. Outside of the theater, Bat saw lots of people who had come to see Janie and her play. There was Dad. Hey, sport. Hi, Valerie. He said to Bat and Bat's mom. There was Lawrence. Bat boy. Dr. Tam, he said. Bat had never seen Lawrence wearing regular clothes. He always saw Lawrence at, a, at the clinic where Lawrence wore blue scrubs. And tonight, Lawrence was wearing a shirt with buttons and a collar and a sport coat. And his shoes looked like they were made of leather instead of rubber. You look different, Bat told Lawrence. Lawrence. Lawrence laughed, his same laugh, even from inside the different clothes, and that made him seem more like Lawrence again. There was Ezra and his parents, and there was Israel and his mom and dad. Israel waved to Bat, and Bat waved back, but, but he felt kind of shy about it. On Thursday, Israel had been all better from his cold, but things still seemed different, not the same between them. They shared an awkward snack at Israel's kitchen table before Tom had taken them to Bat's house to water the skunk garden. And Mom had gotten home early from the clinic. Finally, it was time to go to Janie's school auditorium where folding chairs were arranged in rows facing the stage. Bat, his mom, Lawrence, and his dad all scooted down a row, not too close to the front, not too far in the back either, and waited for the show to start. Bat, baby, do you want to take off your jacket? Mom whispered as the lights were going dark. Bat slid the zipper down a little and, and then shook his head no. He felt Thor, Thor rustle around and then settle back down. And then the music started and the curtains opened and the kids started singing and dancing. It took a minute, but then Bat recognized Maggie. She looked different at an inner Alice costume, a blue dress with a white apron, white tights, and flat black shoes. She looked older than she looked at the sleepover when she'd been wearing those tiger footy pajamas. But when Jamie came on stage dressed as a queen with her red hoop dress, a giant red crown, and eyelashes that Bat could see from the audience, he didn't recognize her at all until, until Mom leaned over and whispered, look, look, it's your sister. Even then, Bat didn't totally believe that it could be Janie. 
She looked taller than she looked in regular life, and, and she, she moved across the stage like she really was the queen of something. When she opened her mouth to sing her solo, Fat's mouth opened too in surprise. It was Janie. That was the same song she'd been practicing all month, amplified by the microphone she wore taped to her cheek, supported by the music that played along with her, backed up by all the performances, all the other performers, as they danced behind her. She's amazing, Bat whispered Janie's. Janie's song was so strong and loud and wonderful that Bat leaned forward in his seat. He had no idea that Janie could be so wonderful. He had no idea that she was so talented and so brave. He had no idea that... Skunk! yelled a voice in the dark, high-pitched and loud. Skunk! Another voice yelled, and then another, until the auditorium rattled with yells. And then it was filled with something worse, the sharp, acrid stink of Skunk's first spray. Chairs turned over and the audience rushed towards the exit. Bat panicked, eyes stinging from the odor, stopped, dropped to the ground and, and felt around desperately for Thor. Oh, 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 what a mistake it had been to bring the kit. Thor, he cried out in the dark. Beside him, his mom called, Thor? And then Bat heard Dad's voice, Thor, and Lawrence, Thor. Someone turned the lights on and, and Bat spied a black and white tail, two rows up, sticking out from behind an overturned chair. Quick as he could, Bat scuttled over to his arm, to his hands and, and knees and scooped the kit into his arms, cradling close. Bat blinked against the sunlight. He looked up and there on the stage, cross, arms crossed, crown listing to one side, stood Janie. The end.